ever thought about a life story other than your own? Have you ever wondered what life would be like in another person's shoes? Welcome to Person to Person, where we bring you life from a different perspective. Thank you for joining us today. Life is full of ups and downs. You never know when it's going to go right or go left. You never know when it's going to smack you upside the head or how bad it does. But we always get up and keep going no matter the odds. Today's guest will talk about some of his personal experiences, such as his stroke and seizures, and how he manages after all it happened. We'd like you to meet today's guest, Gabe Calderon. Gabe, how are you doing today? Good. So when was your stroke and seizure? Uh, I had my stroke when I was nine. Um, had it in the middle of my fourth grade year, um, I, and it was fine. I didn't have any seizures until, actually, like, I think it came from. Uh, <laughs> this is my personal thought. I'm not sure where, where, but I had my first seizure two years later. But before, like, the week of the seizure, I had I went on a roller coaster, and I felt weird after it. And then, like, a week later, I had a seizure in a pool, and I was with family. And I was like ha having a seizure. I was drowned, freaked out my cousins, you know, and that was fun. <laughs> um, how often do you have them? Uh, I actually don't know, but I take medic medication and that helps with it. <laughs> okay. How did it affect your body at such a young age? Uh, it affected me like pretty heavily when it comes to like adapting to like day to day life. And I was like, what do I do now? Because when I got out of the hospital, I felt constantly. Like, I couldn't really walk straight. I was like, ah, uh, this sucks. <laughs> I went to the park, actually, and uh, I tried to run, and I, like, s fell, and I scraped my arm. I had, like, a huge cut going from, like, my wrist to all the way down to my elbow. Wow. And my parents were, like, freaking out. Like, you shouldn't have tried to run. <laughs> I'm like, I wanted to run. <laughs> yeah. um, was it hard transitioning to a more complicated life? Uh, it was definitely different like I felt it was more hard transition just living like an ordinary life mm -hmm. like complex things I was I was like found a way around them usually but when it came to like simple things like I said uh that's a lot harder to kind of figure out I couldn't really do things with just one hand like I had to hold books and open doors and I was like uh that's really hard to do mm -hmm. <laughs> uh yeah it made me think like a lot differently when it comes to like doing things from day-to-day -day life because I'd have to like manage with one hand, holding books, holding bags, uh, opening things, trying like make myself some food or something. That was different because I had to like do it one at a time. Mm -hmm. I would take like the milk, pour that, then I'd have to go get the cereal, pour that step by step. I couldn't just do it like milk then cereal. Mm -hmm. And I had to get the bowl like beforehand. It's just a lot of things I had to like start thinking about preparing for, knowing that I only use one hand mm -hmm. at a time. Cause yeah. How old were you when this was happening? Uh, I had my stroke when I was nine. I've been adapting with it since now. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, how does your stroke affect the people in your life? Uh, it definitely makes them feel like they need to help me more, mm -hmm. which in turn makes me feel like I need to like do more to get get them off my back. <laughs> my parents are more so like worried for me. They're like, oh, he can't live by himself. <laughs> so that act makes me want to prove a point that I can like, oh, I can move out one day and live by myself. Mm -hmm. So every chance I get to like be by myself, I'm by myself trying to live my yeah. own life. It's just, it's kind of dumb. I'm like, it's just through a point. <laughs> yeah, no, it makes sense. Uh, yeah, but um, as for friends, they kind of like treated me differently because they didn't know how to treat me like after I had my uh, stroke and seizure. Mm -hmm. They just saw me as like a kid who's like, oh, oh my gosh, you can't really do anything anymore. He's with uh, a bunch of like helpers in school at least. And uh, they didn't, they kind of treated me differently. Some of them, they started like pretending to be nice to me when they didn't have to be nice to me. Mm. And that's kind of when I realized people acted differently to people who they thought weren't very like totally yeah. there. <laughs> the kids at that age are horrible people yeah. anyway. So um, you mentioned the uh, task with the milk. Are there any other tasks that have been really complicated for you? Uh, 
tasks that are complicated for me, like carrying tables like that aren't heavy but are wide, mm -hmm. like that would get to me because my arm jerks, my left arm. It jerks if it's not used to holding something because mm -hmm. it's the position it's in. Mm -hmm. I can't have it palm down or palm up, which is called supination, like occupational therapy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this this like position, I can't keep it. Mm -hmm. So if I try to do something like that with my left, it'll jerk as if it wants to let go. And it'll kind of release, release the grip. So if I'm trying to carry something, it'll just kind of like jerk and I'll drop it. So simple tasks which use one hand are easy for you, but anything that requires two yeah, is working a bit a little yeah, even more complicated. Even if it's not like difficult, like if it's a simple task, mm -hmm. it'll become difficult. <laughs> okay. Um, how did your life at school change after your stroke? Uh, my life at school, I kind of disliked going to school, mm -hmm. not because of like the <coughs> fact that I didn't like school, but more so because of the fact of the way people acted and treated me, mm -hmm. ranging from like the students to the faculty, because they all kind of assumed I was like not really on like functional level when it came to like intellectual wise, mm -hmm. because they're just like, oh, well, he had a brain injury, so that just means he's not totally there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that kind of just resulted in me like kind of hating going to class and kind of just hating the whole process of school. I was like, they keep treating me like I'm some kid and it really frustrated me because mm -hmm. they would talk to me as if I was like in elementary school. Yeah. I was like, uh, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, you lost the function of the use of your arm, but yeah. not your head. Your head was fine. Yeah, yeah. Thoughts and everything were there, but you just couldn't yeah, move correctly. Like, it hit the motor part of my brain, mm -hmm. and that was pretty much the main area I got. Yeah. Like, there's not much else the doctors concluded. Like, oh, well, he should be fine, I guess, because it didn't really hit any of his cognitive skills. And there's a lot more that I didn't like about school, but that's, that's just because of school-wise. Yeah. Do you think it's possible to redevelop your left arm? Uh, yeah, I think it's possible. My occupational therapist thought it's possible. Doctors tend to give me like a response where it's like, eh, we, you can hope for the best, but I wouldn't put all your eggs in that basket. Mm -hmm. um, what about pain and sensation pain. in your left arm? Do you, can you feel anything? Uh, it's a lot less sensitive. So I had I like to mess around with friends and be like, hey, punch me as hard as you can. I I won't really feel it. Mm -hmm. And um, there's actually one time in middle school where I was talking to some kid who was on the, well, not he wasn't on the wrestling. He he was he was wrestling with his brother, and he did like all these diets. So he was like this strong kid built, and uh, he didn't believe that if he punched me as hard as he could that I wouldn't feel it, and he was kind of scared to punch me. So to, so to get him to throw me a hard punch, what I did was I proved him that I couldn't feel. I took my arm up, mm -hmm. all the way up, slammed as hard as I could on the table. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a loud, like, boom. And the teacher just looked at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> Everyone wow. was just like, oh, God. <laughs> I was like, oh, I, don't, I just didn't feel it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I guess that, that can come into play for, like, party tricks. You can yeah. do different things with it. I guess that's an advantage to yeah. it. It was, um, great. it was great if I ever got to fight. Just <laughs> yeah, just use that as your shield. Yeah. Do you take any medication or go through rehab for anything? Yeah, I take medication for uh, the seizures. Mm -hmm. I take Keppra. It's, I have to take it every day. Otherwise, there's a good chance I'll get a seizure. Oh. And if I get a seizure, I have to wait six or three months before I can drive again. Okay. Because that's the law in Connecticut and New York. Mm -hmm. You have to wait like six months before you can drive. And uh, it's only if you have a seizure. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I take it to so I can keep driving. So it's pretty important to take yeah. that medication. <laughs> yeah, otherwise I can get to school. Yeah, that is not an, a good thing. So yeah. you are able to drive though perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah. It's just if you have a seizure, yeah. they, do they take away your license or do they just? Uh, it's th nothing happens in DMV. It's just if they catch me driving, and they find out I have uh, had a seizure beforehand, mm -hmm. they they have the right to kind of suspend me. Wow. So that's not something I want to go through. <laughs> yeah, no, that is definitely not uh, definitely not a yeah. fun thing. As for therapy, I kind of go to the gym mm -hmm. and do any activities that involve both hands or are supposed to involve both hands, which I'm not very good at doing sometimes. Yeah. So I just put all the work on the right hand side. And I'll be like, okay, cool. But at the gym, I try to incorporate both arms mm -hmm. using machines because that kind of like holds my arm in position as long as I can find a grip. Because I can close my hand. I just mm -hmm. can't open it. So you have full strength in your arm, you just can't do a motor functions. With yeah, like ground. fine motor, like moving the fingers, like a, like play piano or something like that, I can't do that at all. Okay. 
but like I have s good grip strength mm -hmm. and I have actual like muscle on my bicep and upper shoulder. So I can be able to like do activities with that. Like I go to the gym, I um, do that for therapy, but I should be doing more fine motor to help out my hand. Yeah. But it just frustrates me that I don't know how to open the hands. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. I can see that being yeah. like a very annoying thing. Yeah. It is a so, simple task. Yeah, it's, you just so can't it's do it. usually when I try to do that, it's a lot of me just sitting down for like an hour mm -hmm. trying to just open my hands. Mm -hmm. And it'll kind of just go from like a halfway curled finger open to like just like a resting open. Yeah. But it takes like an hour to get me there, and that's beyond frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, if you if you had all the problems with your leg and your face and everything, and that yeah. that developed yeah. to be fine, and now you know your arm will eventually get to that point. It just yeah, might yeah. take some time to get there. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just hard sometimes to go through that, but you know, keep going. Nothing else to do about that. <laughs> yeah, that, that is life. Yep. <laughs> uh, today we met someone who had it a bit harder in life than most. He recovered well and plans to enter the film and television industry in the future. Nothing will hold him back from achieving his goal. I'd like to thank Gabe Calderon for joining us today. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's program and leave with a more inspired outlook on your own life. Join us next time on Person to Person. Until then, have a great day.